Pre-trip Pre -trip should take you about 15 minutes in the morning before you go out on your very first run. As you approach your school bus, when you're walking up to it in the morning, you should be pre-tripping it. You want to check out the posture of your school bus, make sure it's not leaning from one side or the other, indicating a flat tire or a suspension problem. Look underneath your school bus, make sure there's no fluids leaking and also no debris that could be caught up in your suspension. You want to check your mirrors, your West Coast mirror, make sure it's securely fastened. Check any wiring, make sure it's not arcing. Check your crossover mirrors, make sure that they're properly secured. Look at your headlights, your crossing gate, make sure it has proper tension. You want to make sure that you're checking underneath the hood with the engine off. When you approach your school bus on this side of your bus, you're going to check all your hoses, all your wiring. Make sure they're properly secured. Your hoses are not leaking, they're not dry rotted, cracked, or damaged. You want to look at all your wiring to make sure it's properly secured and it's not arcing. Check out your serpentine belt. Make sure it has proper tension, three quarters a play, and it's not dry rotted, cracked, or frayed. Look at all your fluid levels. Make sure they're proper level and they're not leaking. Check out your leaf springs, your suspension, your frames, making sure they're properly secured and there's no distorted holes or excessive rust. Look at your shock, make sure it's fully extended, not bent or damaged, and it's not leaking. You want to look at your U-bolts and your U-clips, your spring mounts, make sure they're properly secured. Check out your brake hoses and lines, making sure they're properly secured and they're not dry rotted, cracked, or damaged. Look at your brake chamber your seals in place, it's not leaking, looking at your your push rod and your slack adjuster, making sure it's properly secured and your cotter pins in place. You want to look at your brake drums, making sure they're properly secured and they're not uh, damaged in any way or rust in any any location. Try to look through the slits to make sure your pads are not worn excessively. You want to check out your tires. Make sure the depth is at proper level. Make sure that it's not bruised or damaged. It's at proper inflation. Look at your drum and all your lug nuts. Making sure your lug nuts are properly secured. They're not, they do not have any excessive rust trails or shiny threads. Make sure your hub oil seal is in place and it's not leaking. Your valve stem is in place, caps on, and it's not leaking. Go to the other side. On this side of the bus, you're going to look at everything that is the same on the other side of the bus. Check all your hoses and all your wiring and all your fluid levels. You want to make sure your Pritman arm, drag link, and tie rods are all secured and your cotter pins are in place. With your oil, all you need to do is pull out your oil dipstick and make sure there's oil on it. If you see that there is oil on it, just replace the dipstick. The same would be for your transmission as well. Just make sure there is transmission fluid in your reservoirs. The hybrid bus does not have a dipstick for transmission. You're going to look at your brake chambers and brake lines the same way you did on the other side and your tires. Make sure they are exactly the same as the other side. They're not damaged, properly inflated, not leaking. Check out your windshield wipers. Proper tension, the blade's in place, and it's not cracked or dry rotted. Make sure the hoses on your windshield wiper are also in place and not leaking. Once you've done so, you're going to close your hood back up. After you've, you've completed the inspection under your hood, make sure you re-secure your latches so the hood does not come open on you. You're going to check your West Coast mirrors, making sure they're properly secured. Look at all your windows, making sure they're securely mounted, not cracked or damaged, and have no illegal stickers. Your stop bar should have proper tension. You want to look at your cable, make sure it's properly secured and your cotter pins in place. Your boot is properly secured, not dry rotted, cracked, or leaking. All your lenses should be properly secured. Your wiring, make sure it's properly secured and it's not arcing. As you approach the side of your bus, you want to look underneath your bus. You're going to get underneath the bus to check your frame, 
making sure your frame is properly secured, your exhaust system is properly secure, it's not loose, and it's not no excessive soot indicating a leak. Your drive shaft and your hangers, you're making sure that it's properly secured and there's no debris caught up anywhere in your system. Check your side door. Make sure it opens and closes freely, not caught up in any way. Your back wheel system. You should be looking underneath your wheels and your rear suspension, making sure everything's properly secured and nothing's caught up in, in the suspension. Your back tires are properly inflated. No, no damage to the wheel itself. Your lug nuts, properly secured, no shiny threads, no rust trails indicating a loose lug nut. Your valve stems, properly secured and your cap is in place. Continue down the side of your bus to the back. As you approach the back of your bus, you should be looking for the same things as you did in the front of your bus, making sure all your lenses are properly secured, nothing's cracked and broken. Proper color. You're going to approach your, your back door, making sure that it opens and closes freely, not catching up on anything. Right here is where you need to be looking underneath your bus, in between your duals, making sure there's nothing caught up in your tires. Nothing's caught up in your frame and your exhaust system. As you approach this side of your bus, my fuel area is in the back. I'm going to be checking my cap, making sure it's properly secure. The seal is in place and it's not leaking. You're going to be looking at your fuel cage. You're going to be making sure it's properly secured, no debris, and it's not leaking. Your compartment, your baggage compartment area, your triangles are inside. The door opens and closes freely. You're going to look at this side of the bus the same way you did on the other side of the bus, looking through your rear suspension and your tires. Come down the side of the bus, look underneath this side making sure nothing's caught up underneath your bus, everything's properly secured and nothing's leaking. You're going to approach your door. You're going to make sure everything's properly secured, nothing's broken, no illegal stickers. Now I'll go to the inside of the bus. Approach your school bus steps. You want to make sure your tread is properly secure and eat not and is evenly worn. Your handrail should be properly secured. Your courtesy light should be properly secured and not cracked or broken. Check your fire extinguisher, making sure it's properly secured, it's not expired, and it is in the green. When I come into the bus, I'm going to start my bus. I'm going to turn on my lights my hazards on. I'm going to go ahead and start my bus. At this time I'm going to check my lights making sure they are working properly. I've activated my hazards. I've turned on my headlights. I'm going to go ahead and activate my yellows. In my crossovers I can see that my yellows are working. Now I'm going to move to the back of the bus checking my emergency exit windows and doors. Let me get behind you. Okay, as I walk through my bus, I'm checking all my seats, making sure they're properly secured. I'm going to be checking my alarms on my windows, making sure they're working properly. I'm going to be checking my tread out on my floor, making sure it's not worn too thin and it's properly secured. Check the alarms on my doors, making sure they're walk working properly. My dome lights are working properly. I'm going to be looking, make sure there's no debris in the bus. Checking my alarms. At this time, I would check my strobe light, make sure it's working properly. Check the back door. Can you get through there? I'm going to make sure my yellows, my amber lights are working in the back. Okay, at this time I'm going to activate my reds, making sure my stop arm comes out properly. I'm going to make sure in my crossovers that I can see my reds are activated. 
I also am checking to make sure my crossing gate is working properly, and they are. At this point, I would get out of my bus and walk the entire bus to make sure my headlights are working properly, my marker lights and clearance lights are working properly. I would go to the back of the bus to make sure that they are all working at the back of the bus. Once I've done so, I would come back in. You need to go ahead and sit down and shut your bus down. That there is my no child left behind alarm. I will go back and deactivate that. Okay, I just finished up my no child left behind alarm. Everything's working fine with that. Now I'm going to perform my lab test. I'm going to turn my key to the right and I'm going to release my parking brake with the bus chalk. With my foot off the brake, I should lose no more than two pounds of pressure per minute. With my foot on the brake, I should lose no more than three pounds of pressure per minute. I'm going to go ahead and fan my brakes. At 60, my alarms are going to go off. At 30, my parking brake will pop back out. There it is. Your lab test is now complete. That is a pre-trip you need to do in the morning before you take your bus out in the, for your first run. Now, in your PM and in your noon days, just do a walk around, a post-trip. All you need to do at that time is just make sure all your lights are working and record it on your pre-trip form. There are times on a school bus when things happen on the bus or on the road that calls for the bus to be evacuated. In this video, we will cover front door evacuations, back door evacuations, and side and back door evacuations. Before any trip, the driver must assign student helpers at all doors to help out in the event of an evacuation. The first step for any driver is to shut down the bus if the bus needs to be evacuated. They should turn on their emergency Boys flashers and, and make the students the aware here. of the situation and tell them and what kind of evacuation will be bus. taking place. And I want, it's going to be a front door evacuation, okay? You understand? Let's go. In a front door evacuation, student leaders will lead all students out of the front door of the bus at least 100 feet away from the bus. After all students have exited the bus, the driver should check for any students left behind. Once the driver has verified that all students are off of the bus, the driver exits the bus with their roster and first aid kit and joins the students and waits for emergency responders to arrive. In a back door evacuation, student helpers will open the back door and exit the bus to help all the other students out. The student helpers will assist all students safely exit the bus. No one is permitted to jump out of the door. All students should go at least 100 feet from the bus. Once the students have exited the bus, the driver will again check for any students left behind and then exit the bus themselves with their roster and first aid kit and join all the students. In a side and back door evacuation, student helpers will open both the side and back doors of the bus. The student helpers will assist all students from the bus. Again, no one is permitted to jump from the bus. All students will go at least 100 feet away from the bus from both exits. After all students are off, the driver will check for any students left behind and then exit the bus with their roster and first aid kit, join the other students, and wait for emergency responders to arrive.
Picking up or unloading students on a run, it's an 18-step process with one-third of it scanning your mirrors for oncoming traffic and students. When approaching the drop-off or pickup point, activate your ambers 150 feet prior to reaching the point. Once you stop, scan your mirrors for traffic, set your brake, count your students, and then activate your reds and stop arm. Scan your mirrors again for any oncoming traffic or students running to the bus. Once it is safe to do so, motion your students to cross in front of the bus and come aboard, making sure they use the handrail as they enter. Shut your door, scan the mirrors, and once the students are seated, deactivate your reds and stop arm. Give your mirrors a final scan, put the bus in gear, release your brake, and proceed to your next stop. In Boone County, we have a lot of kids involved in the music programs at school. The kids need to bring their instruments home to practice and to school for class. But there are a few rules you need to know when bringing your instruments onto the bus. The biggest things to consider is seat space and the safety of other students on the bus. Can a student hold an instrument in their lap and not interfere with the other students nearby? In this example, the student can safely hold their instrument in their lap and still have room for the student next to her. This instrument is too big to be on the bus because it takes up both seats on the bench. There are some bigger instruments that can sit on the floor between the student's feet. They include a bassoon, bass clarinet, alto saxophone, and a trombone. A tenor saxophone is allowed on a school bus only if there are two students in the seat. By board policy, instruments like the tuba, cello, French horn, baritone horn, string bass, and drums are not allowed on school buses and must be transported by the parents to the school.